the minute the NARS settlement dropped, you had this explosion of speculation and frenzy across the board. Well, they're lying to you, and I guess we shouldn't be surprised. Today, we're gonna walk through the settlement. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna point out the five biggest lies that you're hearing everywhere you turn. Well, hey everyone, it's Wendy Pennell, and I have been blown away at the speculation that's going on about this settlement. And let me just tell you right now, okay, you're not gonna get any of that here. All right, and here's why, okay? I want you to think about four steps when we're looking at this settlement statement, okay? We're gonna take it in this order. Number one, what does it say? Okay, well, we can read. Number two, what does it mean? Well, as long as we have reasonably good reading comprehension and a dictionary, we can figure that out, okay? But where we're getting all the bad information is from number three and number four, okay? Number three, what are the logistics? And number four, what is the application? All right, so all these people out there who are you know, professing to be experts, they're like skipping steps one and two, right? The reading and, and the meaning, and then they're like jumping into like the logistics and the application, right? When really they need to be starting off at number one and number two to make sure that what they're saying is actually accurate. So let's read the text, okay? Not all 108 pages of it, I'm not gonna do that to you, but let's read the practice changes in paragraph 58, okay? And when you hear the phrase practice changes, okay, what I want you to think about is we are changing the way we practice real estate, okay? So practice changes. All right, in paragraph 58, item number one, this is what it says. The National Association of Realtor will implement the following practice changes changes. They will eliminate and prohibit any requirement that listing brokers or sellers must make offers of compensation to buyer brokers and eliminate and prohibit any requirement that such offers, if made, must be blanket, unconditional, or unilateral. So reading the text, okay, we have NAR cannot require sellers or listing brokers to pay buyer brokers. Okay, that's number one. And number two, if they do decide to pay, they can't require offers to be blanket, unconditional, or unilateral. So in this very first section, we're already seeing big changes, okay? Because here, here's why. In paragraph eight of the Texas Realtors Listing Agreement, okay, and it's entitled Cooperation with Other Brokers, it reads, broker will offer to pay the other broker a fee as described below if the other broker procures a buyer that purchases the property. Then it goes on to list fields where you can enter a percentage or an amount. With the listing agreement written that way, does it violate the mandate that NAR must eliminate and prohibit any requirement that listing brokers or sellers must make offers of compensation? Well, I think you could argue that when it asks for an amount, that field could be zero. Right, so not necessarily. But how about the second part? NAR must eliminate and prohibit any requirement that such offers, if made, must be blanket, unconditional, or unilateral. Does paragraph eight of our current listing agreement allow for that? Well, no, I don't believe it does. So I believe we're gonna see the listing agreement change to accommodate this requirement. Now, I have watched several videos where the speaker says buyer commissions won't be mentioned anywhere on the listing agreement. All right, do you see that in the text? Because I don't see that. So we're not going to speculate and make assumptions here. We're not going to build entire narratives off of information that isn't there. Maybe there will be references to paying the buyer's agent or maybe there won't. The settlement doesn't specifically say it can't be on there. So line number one, no mention of buyer's commission on listing agreement debunked. The settlement doesn't prohibit it. The correct answer is simply at this point, we still don't fully know, okay? It's going to be hammered out. But again, let's not build entire narratives based on assumption. Okay, moving on, NAR will prohibit realtors from making offers of compensation on the MLS to buyer brokers or disclosing on the MLS listing broker compensation. Also, NAR must require realtor MLSs to eliminate all broker compensation fields and prohibit offers of compensation via any other realtor field. They also have to prohibit any requirements that condition participation or membership in a realtor MLS 
on offering or accepting offers of compensation to buyer brokers. And if they haven't hammered it home just yet, they continue, NARA must agree not to create any non-MLS mechanism for listing brokers or sellers to make offers of compensation. Okay, so the settlement gods do not want offers of compensation to buyer brokers on the MLS or any non-MLS mechanism. So our third change is that number three, no broker fees will be shown on the MLS. The interpretation I've heard here is that realtors won't know what they're being paid until they negotiate it within their buyer's offer, that they won't be able to find it in writing anywhere since it won't be on the MLS. So let's explore that. The settlement reads that this provision is not violated by a realtor displaying both data from a realtor MLS and offers of compensation to buyer brokers, but only on listings from their own brokerage. So realtors can list commissions of their own listings on their own website, on advertisements, pretty much anywhere except the MLS. So line number two, realtors can't know what or if the sellers will pay them debunked. Now the process will be more cumbersome and listing agents will need to be more intentional, but it can certainly be disclosed. Okay, moving on, the settlement gods continue. Unless inconsistent with state or federal law, NAR must require that all realtor MLS participants working with a buyer enter into a written agreement before the buyer tours any home. Now I wanna park here for just a minute because I think this is gonna be really sobering for a lot of buyers. A buyer's agent cannot do so much as to show you a home without signing an agreement with you. All right, there's no trial period, no let's view a few homes, see if we have the right chemistry. And, and, and I think, and this is where YouTube will be vital for gauging a realtor's experience. And, and I also think interviewing agents with a checklist would be appropriate. Like find out what services the agent offers. You're gonna know upfront what you can expect working with us personally, okay? Because we're gonna give you that checklist. So number four, you'll need to sign an agreement with a buyer's agent before touring any homes. Now I have to tell you a story, All right? I recently had a relocating buyer and, and we had a Google Meet, right? And I explained to him that we require a representation agreement before we provide client services. I sent him the agreement, he didn't sign it, right? And then like a week later, he said he was coming into town, would I meet him for showings, you know, and to kind of tour the Metroplex? Well, I explained again, you know, listen, the representation agreement, it really has to come first. So he went ahead and just kind of went out on his own, and, and which was, was perfectly fine. He later communicated to me, that he never had any intention of using one realtor. Okay, he was gonna use any agent, whichever one brought him a house first. So from what I can understand, what he fully expected, right, was to have numerous buyer agents out there all diligently looking on his behalf, sort of hoping to earn his business. Well, here's the thing. After this ruling comes into play, that's not gonna be possible. Now, he can view home after home through listing agents, okay? But what he needs to understand is that those agents don't represent him and they're not going to be like proactively on the hunt, okay? Because that's not their job. Their job is to represent the seller. So once these changes go into effect, you won't be able to use like multiple buyer agents in that way to have them all scurrying around looking for you. So if you can kind of picture that scenario, that's what you'll no longer be able to have, okay? You won't be able to have like multiple buyer agents, none of whom you've committed to with all of them like researching and trying to find you a home. You you have to decide on a buyer's agent and sign an agreement with whatever terms you negotiate, or you have to work with listing agent after listing agent after listing agent who all want you to pay the highest amount you can possibly pay. Now, what you can't have, all right, is multiple buyer agents all competing against each other at the same time to find you a home, you know, without representation agreements with each one of them. Okay, so a written agreement now required in order to show a home. But moving on, the settlement continues to the extent that such a realtor will receive compensation from any source, the agreement must specify and disclose the amount or rate of compensation it will receive or how this amount will be determined. So in layman's terms again, number five, agreement must specify the amount or rate of compensation or how this amount will be determined. So just for sure we understand here, let's get a definition of the word or. Collins Dictionary explains you use or to link two or more alternatives. As in, you have to disclose a specific amount 
or how this amount will be determined. You don't have to do both. Okay, but let's continue. The amount of compensation reflected must be objectively ascertainable and may not be open-ended. And it's kind enough to give us an example here, okay? It can't say buyer broker compensation shall be whatever amount the seller is offering to the buyer. Okay, so objectively and ascertainably, what do those words mean? All right, well, objectively. The Cambridge Dictionary puts it this way, in a way that is based on facts. What does ascertainable mean? Well, Collins Dictionary says it is capable of being found out or discovered with certainty. So I think the word ascertainable is key here. All right, the idea is we can't know for sure if a seller will pay a commission so it's not capable of being discovered with certainty, right? It's not ascertainable. This is an agreement between the buyer and their realtor, so it has to be something the buyer and the realtor can discover with certainty between the two of them. But remember, it does not have to be a specific amount. I mean, it could be, but it could also be how the amount will be determined as long as it's objective and ascertainable. As long as you follow these rules, you're only limited by the resourcefulness of you and your realtor. So line number three is you have to decide how much to pay your realtor when you sign the agreement. False. Instead, you could decide how the amount will be determined. All right, you just have to remember you can't force another party to perform. That's why saying the seller will pay is not ascertainable. All right, let's just add a cherry on top. The settlement also writes, such a realtor may not receive compensation for brokerage services from any source that exceeds the amount or rate agreed to in the agreement with the buyer. So number six, the realtor may not be paid from any source above the amount or rate agreed to in the buyer's agreement. Well, that right there flies right in the face of the Texas Realtors Buyer Representation Agreement. All right, it reads, if a seller or their agents offer compensation in excess of the amount, broker may retain the additional compensation in addition to the specified commission. So we know between now and July 15, there are a lot of changes that will be happening, not the least of which is to these listing and buyer representation agreements. Now, one thing I noticed missing in this section is conveyance. Like how will the listing broker know what's on the buyer's representation agreement? Is the buyer's agent supposed to turn it over with any offers? So it's gonna be interesting to see how this gets fine tuned in the implementation phase. What it looks like from this statement, okay, is that the settlement is pushing the buyer to accept risk. So a realtor can't say they'll accept a dollar as a commission in order to get you as the buyer to sign the agreement, you know, knowing that they'll just go on to collect, you know, like 3% from the listing agent. Okay, moving on because we're not done yet. NAR must prohibit realtors from representing to a client that their brokerage services are free unless they will receive no financial compensation from any source. Now I have seen so many advertisements like this over the years. I mean, so many realtors saying their services won't cost the buyer anything. I have to tell you, okay, I read this quote the other day and it was so thought provoking. Okay, you ready for it? Here it is. When the consumer who hires an agent pays that agent, that consumer is much more careful about fees. So to the extent you had a consumer who thought it was all free. I mean, why would they even care what the fees are? All right, but this settlement now, okay, it is forcing buyers to have to care. Okay, so number seven, the agent can't say it's free unless it's really free. Next up is number eight, which is nothing at all new within the real estate industry. Number eight, realtors must tell their sellers the commission is negotiable, and the amount needs to be in writing. All right, moving on to number nine. NAR must require that realtors must not filter out or restrict MLS listings based on the level of compensation offered. Okay, so number nine, realtors can't filter out listings based on the commission offered. And really, shame on any realtors who have been doing that, all right? It violates fiduciary 101 of the client's interests always coming before your own. The information about brokerage services form specifically describes a broker's minimum duties required by law. Here it is. They are to put the interests of the client above all others, including the broker's own interests. Okay, number 10, and I think this section covers the area where we're hearing the most wrong information. Are you ready? Now, keep in mind the term, again, practice 
changes, all right? That's what this entire video is about, all right? We have to change the way we practice real estate so it is practice changes. Okay, so this is what it says. The practice changes shall not prevent offers of compensation to buyer brokers off of the multiple listing service. So number 10, buyer's brokers can be offered compensation, but it can't be advertised on the MLS. Buyer's realtors can be offered compensation and they can be paid. Again, it just can't be advertised on the MLS. So all of the pundits out there, they just keep missing this one. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've heard videos and, and seen posts on social media saying sellers cannot and will not be paying the buyer's agent anymore. So gigantic, enormous line number four is this, sellers will no longer pay the buyer's agent. I mean, I have heard this from like sensationalist news sources, but I've also heard it from credible sources that up until now, I highly respect it, all right? It's simply not true, okay? So listen to the verbiage again. The practice changes shall not prevent offers of compensation to buyer brokers off of the multiple listing service. So it doesn't even limit that to sellers and their listing agents, okay? Arguably, there could be other parties offering compensation to buyer brokers. Okay, moving on to number 11. This is how it reads. The practice changes shall not prevent sellers from offering buyer concessions on a realtor MLS so long as such concessions are not limited to or conditioned on the retention of or payment to a buyer broker. So number 11, sellers can offer buyer concessions on the MLS. It just can't be like limited to or conditioned on payment to a buyer broker. So let's just say you're looking at a home online. It's after July 15, right? There's no MLS amount stated, but it says 3% commission offered to buyer. All right. If you so choose that right there could be your agent's commission. The listing agent just can't spell it out that way. Next up. And I think this is interesting. Paragraph 59 reads the obligations set forth in paragraph 58 of this settlement agreement will terminate seven years after the class notice date. So number 12, the practice changes terminate in seven years. So to all the pundits out there saying real estate has now been changed forever, no, technically it hasn't. Again, if we're going specifically by the settlement, it's for seven years. So to that extent, we have line number five, real estate has changed forever. Maybe it will and maybe it won't, but forever is not what the settlement reads. Now, how about we bring some government into this, all right? Here we go. If in an action brought against the NAR by the U.S. Department of Justice, U.S. Federal Trade Commission, or any state attorney general, and a final judgment is entered by a court, which requires the NAR to adopt any practice changes that are inconsistent with the settlement agreement, the NAR may comply with the terms of such judgment. So number 13, again, totally in layman's terms here, a government judgment could override some or everything. So if the government can intervene and we're going into an election year, I can't help but wonder how this is going to be used as a volley <laughs> between the political parties. It's a pretty big deal. And President Biden has already made some comments on it. According to Housing Wire, he said, for the first time, Americans can negotiate lower commissions when they buy or sell their home. Well, NAR jumped in with some corrections to Biden's statements. NAR President Kevin Sears said, while the National Association of Realtors appreciates President Biden's continued focus on the affordable housing crisis, the president unfortunately repeated incorrect claims that the recently announced settlement agreement allows Americans to negotiate commissions for the first time. He continues, commissions were already negotiable before this resolution was reached and will continue to be negotiable as they have been. Real estate agent commissions are driven by the market and are not the cause of the affordability crisis. Also in this article, Housing Wire reports that Sears stressed that lack of inventory and supply is the larger issue when it comes to the housing affordability crisis. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you, at a local level, I'm not sure that's true. All right, I'm watching new construction homes languish on the market and I'm like, okay, so where is this lack of inventory? Anyway, I dig into that whole issue in this video, which you may wanna watch next. In the meantime, Wendy out.